What is something you've done purely out of the goodness of your heart, but have never told anyone? I lost my mom earlier this year, and I'm still working through the grief. The first week I came back my coworkers had gave me a check for several hundred dollars as a kind gesture. I was truly overwhelmed by the generosity. The following week I came into the break room to find one of the techs with a lost look on her face. She had just gotten a phone call that her brother had been murdered the night before. She had moved to our city just a year prior and didn't have any family close by. As I held her and listened to her cry, I booked her a flight home. It was several hundred dollars as she is from a small town and the flight was for later that day. I told her to go, be with family and let me know when she was ready to come back. I had no doubt that is exactly what my mom would have wanted me to do. I do it work. Usually small business and a lot of home repair. I have many wealthy clients and a few not so fortunate. It is not unusual for me to go to a home and it is obvious they are barely scraping by. So I either don't charge those people or make it a nominal fee. I also refer the old PCs and give them to people who have one that is not repairable. My best fee ever was a basket of homegrown Creole tomatoes. Damn those things are delicious. My dad was a plumber at repairman general handyman and did the same shit. I found out when he died that if he could tell a family couldn't afford the quote, he'd tell them to just hold off. He'd show up once he got off work and do everything for the cost of parts. I had this happen to me once when my kids were young. My AC was out and the free in line needed to be replaced. Probably had a crack somewhere. Normally it goes from the unit up to the attic space. I asked if I could take the old, loose siding off my house and have them take a look to repair the crack instead of running a whole new line. They agreed and came back the next day. To their horror. The line had been laid in the cement foundation when the house was built. It was raining all week. My husband was gone for his grandfather's funeral they did not know this. But I was alone in a tiny house with two kids. I had a two year old crying at my feet and a four year old in the house. The guy went to his truck and called someone. He came back and fixed everything. Then told me no charge. I was so confused and asked if the warranty covered it. He said no ma'am. Please just sign the invoice. I realized later that he called his boss and was probably like the poor woman took the siding off her house to save money and I think she's a single mom with two kids. Can we work something out? Love that company and recommend them to everyone I know without telling why except that they are amazing and do great work. Their magnet moved to our new house and stays on the fridge as a reminder. The ex-army old fella moved in next door around a year ago. We get along okay. Eventually I found out he lives on pasta. Just pasta with nothing else because money. I like to make extra food and take over any leftovers fairly regularly. I usually take a beer over as well, but I suspect he doesn't drink these. It's not a big thing, but I think it helps out. This isn't as impressive as the comments I've read but this is just something I did recently. I'm a member of a sims group on FB where people talk about the game expansion packs etc. I noticed a comment by a teenager who said her favorite pack would be pets, but she can't afford it. I went onto her page and saw that she really loved horses. I could also tell from her pictures that her mum was disabled and money looked tight. I was fortunate enough when I was her age to always get the packs on the release dates and I use the sims as a wind down from revising and school. I thought that this girl needed the escapism way more than I ever did, so I bought every expansion pack, messaged her the activation codes, a link to a YouTube video on how to use them, and a short message saying I hope you enjoy playing, and to keep smiling. I really do wish her the very best. I grew up with not a lot of money and definitely not in the best neighborhoods. My parents struggled with drug and alcohol abuse, so we never had any money. I got myself through college and finally landed a pretty good job. I was visiting a friend of mine who still lived in the same neighborhood and saw there was a girl scout table out in front of a convenience store. Nobody was really buying the cookies. I had just gotten my first bonus from work and had a couple hundred bucks on me. After I left his place I went over and bought 500 worth of girl scout cookies. The little girls were so excited. Over the next few weeks I just randomly gave all those boxes of cookies away. 
this is kinda a one, but I'll try to keep it sorta short. Back when quarantine and stuff first started, I was headed back from the store and came across a broken down car. He had almost made it into the CVS parking lot, but the car gave out just outside of it. I pulled into the parking lot and asked if he wanted a push out of the road. He did. I pushed the car and got it halfway up the little incline going into the parking lot, but couldn't get it any further by myself he had a bad leg and couldn't help, plus he needed to be behind the wheel, but it was out of the street, I asked him what happened, and he told me he had run out of gas, asked if he had a gas can, and he pulled out a small gas can, I offered to run it down to the gas station, and bring it back, on the way back from gilling it up, I began to think to myself that this little bit of gas wouldn't get him very far, and as I had just gotten paid and had just pulled some cash from the bank, figured he could use a little help. When I got to the guy, I gave him the gas can as well as 40, and I told him, I'm not sure how far you need to go, but that little bit of gas isn't gonna get you very far, I hope this helps you out some. He just looked at the money and back at me. Like I'd given him the keys to a new house or something. He started telling me, I get paid tomorrow. I can give you my address and I will pay you back, but I insisted I didn't want anything in return. He looked like he was on the verge of tears. He explained how he had just gotten out of jail a few months before and was trying really hard to stay on the right path, working an honest job and everything, but that it was hard. He told me he would take my kindness as a sign that he was on the right path, and thanked me several times. Had I known how much it meant to him, I would've given him more. I hope he's doing well. These have all been such a potent reminder that a little kindness can go a long way and make a big difference. But your story is so especially powerful since you saw first and your kind deed possibly affecting the course of someone's whole life. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. It was a really powerful moment for me. Kinda sad in that it felt like no one had ever shown him any kindness before. Like I did something extraordinary. To me. All I did was help someone in need. I really do hope has been doing well. Had I thought of it. I should have gotten his address. Just to check in from time to time. And absolutely. I hope someone will read this. Not just my comment. But this thread. And be inspired to go out. And do their own kind deeds for the sake of doing them. You never know just what it means to a person. There's a homeless man who lives in a park close to me. He keeps to himself never bothers anyone. I know this guy's story. His mom was an addict he is as well died on the streets. I live in Sve area so there are a lot of homeless. But I tend to see them in camps. Or on BART. Steer clear. I've left this guy a few things I think he might need. But that's been my extent of contact with him. Today I saw him pushing his cart while I was walking towards him. He stopped as if to let me by, not get in my way. I told him it was okay. Stopped to talk to him. I asked him if he needed anything. He said he was fine. We chatted for a bit. I told him that I often saw him in the park I checked to see if he needed anything from now on. It felt so right. One of my favorite things about living in SF Bay Area honestly. I used to work at the Phoenix Hotel in the Tenderloin District. If you're not from here, to paint the picture in your head, the streets are lined with homeless people and tents. Most people try to avoid this area. My coworkers would even advise me to take my lunch on the property so I could stay protected from the harsh Tenderloin streets. But let me tell you, every single lunch break I had at that job, I walked the blocks around the vicinity of my workplace and handed out whatever extra soaps, shampoos, snacks or hotel toiletries I could get my hands on throughout the day. It became a routine for me. I had great conversations, made good friends, and hopefully made some other lives a little less stressful. I made some friends for life, heard some of the coolest stories, and whenever I had to make the nighttime walk to the BART station, I had people on every corner who had my back watching over me. God if I could put a roof over everyone's head, but I can barely keep my own. God bless you all you beautiful people. Whenever I see cashier having a tough day, I always look at the candy selection. If there is one, and look stumped as to what to get, I ask them I can't decide. What's your favorite? I buy whatever they say. Then hand it to them after the sale, and tell them they're doing a great job and to have a great day.
It perks them up every single time. It's my little thing. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was volunteering at a local pizza shop to distribute slices to kids who otherwise couldn't get fed because the schools were shut down. There was a woman with three kids that came by every few days to get slices. Turns out the father had died unexpectedly right before the pandemic started and they lost their house because of the slumlord they were renting to. The mother lost her job because she had no one to watch the kids. They were living in their minivan and things were bad for them. They were so nice and grateful, but ashamed when they'd come by to get slices that I genuinely felt for them. I had lost my job and got a pretty decent windfall of two months worth of unemployment and the cares act at once. My landlord had a few properties open and is a close friend. So I got in touch with him and we worked out me paying their security deposit in the first two months of rent and he'd cover their utilities. I gave her his number and said he might be able to help and they moved in the next day. They've been there ever since and are doing extremely well now. Edit whoa. This blew up in a matter of no time. Thank you. Everyone. I was homeless at one point in my life. But didn't have children. I couldn't just stand idly by. Especially because I had been given way more money than I even knew what to do with. With everything that was happening and uncertainty of what was coming. I figured that money needed to be used for good. Rather than my own selfish needs. Waiting to see my doctor. I see an elderly man with a walker talking to a driver service for seniors handicap people about jetting him a ride home. Apparently there was a mix up and they couldn't get a driver there. My doctor called me in and when I came out, the elderly man was still there talking to the driver service. I told the guy, if he trusts me, I'll take him home. He responded but I haven't seen the doctor, yet I told him I'll wait. Dude looked like he was going to cry. He was actually a really nice man. And it was a pleasant ride. I'm on the other end of the spectrum I'm not licensed yet and so I have to ask my parents to drive me everywhere. I know everyone reading this had probably been in the spot before. But there's nothing worse than that sickening how am I gonna get home. Feeling when you realize you don't have someone coming to get you. It's also fairly embarrassing depending on where you're at my dad was late picking me up from practice once by 20 minutes. And sitting there alone along the fence trying to call him. The coach just sitting there in his car. It's awful. And when that sort of panic starts to set in. Hearing someone say I'll give you a ride is the best feeling in the world. You save that man a whole lot of heartache. As a former teacher, I've had a student that was left at school after a really great field trip. Her mom was getting her hair done and basically told her she needed to wait at the school until she finished. She told her on the phone. That she shouldn't have gone on the field trip if she wanted to come home that night. My student was 11. I waited with her for 2 hours. After we had returned, we did puzzles, jump roped, and just talked about life. I often think about her and how's she doing. I would have driven her home myself if I could have. On winter weekdays, when I go downtown to practice the organ, there's usually a destitute man on the front steps of the locked church. When I unlock the door, I invite him in out of the cold and let him sleep on a cushioned pew in the relative warmth of the building while I practice or teach organ lessons. He's always very appreciative of the relief from being outside and leaves with obvious appreciation when it's time for me go. I was getting some breakfast one time after a late night out. I was sitting in the restaurant waiting for my food and this younger boy comes in probably 13, 14 or so and orders some food. By the way he was dressed and how he looked you could tell he was definitely living in rough times. He ordered and when they told him the total he pulled some wadded up one bills from his pocket and some change he ended up like 4, 5 short. He had this defeated look on his face and apologized and turned to walk out. I stopped him, asked the cashier to wiring up his order, added a large drink and an extra burrito to it and paid for the whole thing. He tried to give me the money he had, and when I refused he just stood there and slowly tears came over his eyes. I told him to stay strong and not give up because things will get better. I walked out and barely made it to my car before I broke down too. I used to be that kid. I was in my art class in high school and there was a girl who I didn't really know a few grades younger. I could tell she didn't have many friends, but was really sweet. She was talking to me one day and told me her birthday was soon 
and that she was so excited. I decided to send her those balloons and what not you can get through the student store on her birthday. Though she didn't know me very well, so I didn't sign my name. It just so happened that the student store worker brought them in during our art class, and I got to see her reaction. She lit up and kept telling us it had to have been her mom or her best friend who did it, and how she couldn't believe that someone got her something, and she wouldn't stop smiling the whole rest of class. I never told her it was me. I was just happy she felt special. That was a pretty good day. When I was 19 I needed blood work done, and it was super icy out. I just finished and was getting ready to leave when two elderly ladies came in. They commented on how slippery it was and if the clinic had anyone to help them walk back to their car. They were told no. So I sat back down and waited. Half an hour later they went in and the receptionist told me I could leave. I was done. I told her I know and sat there. When the ladies came out they looked a little scared to walk outside and I stood up and said I heard the mask for help and I would help them to their car. I walked the ladies one at a time, letting them hold me for support as I shuffled us to their car. Then, after they were both safely inside, I scraped the ice off their car so they could leave. They offered me money, but I refused and just wished them safe travels. After they left I went to my own car, where I proceeded to fall on my butt five times. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.